there's a lot to take in before you buy a TV, like how many inches, do I go with OLED or QLED, and even the capabilities of the display. Now, you want to get the best TV for your budget and it can get confusing. One of the most confusing elements to TV and video are the formats. You have HDR10, HDR10+, Dolby Vision, HLG, 8-bit or 10-bit, not to mention the dynamic and static metadata. With so many options, it's important to know what you're looking at. So, let's talk about them. As much as we want a simple answer to what all these formats do, it's pretty important to know what the root of these formats include. So, what is HDR? HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. It's a feature that improves, well, your TV's dynamic range from the blackest blacks to the whitest whites. It has the capability to create images that look more realistic and vibrant. On an HDR TV, you'll be able to see deeper and darker blacks and clearer, brighter colors rather than seeing grayish blacks and washed out colors. Now this dynamic range is measured in stops, but most manufacturers report this through a contrast ratio. This in its simplest form is basically the brightest and the darkest images your TV can create. Compared to your SDR or the standard dynamic range, you'll be able to perceive more details when it comes to depth or just overall clarity. Another key concept that all HDR formats use to improve the dynamic range is luminance. This is how much light something can admit. In most cases, it's measured in nits. So here's a little comparison. Your laptop can go anywhere from 300 to maybe as high as 500 nits. With TVs, you're seeing anywhere from 500 and upwards for OLEDs and LCDs, including QLEDs, you're gonna see anywhere above 1500 nits. This results in things like reflections or lights in the dark looking significantly brighter. Next, you've got the color space, more commonly referred to as the gamut. This is the range of colors a TV can actually produce. It's basically luminance, but just for color. Rather than showing shadows that are darker or highlights that are brighter, you're looking at more vibrant colors. So you could go from a blue like this to a blue like this with improved saturation and a truer hue. Now, in the past, SDR has used a color space called Rec. 709 or sRGB. Now, in your HDR videos, it'll display a much wider color space called Rec. 2020. Most common content will support a slightly smaller space called DCI-P3, but either way, this is the reason you'll see an increase in the saturation and a truer hue. Lastly, we have bit depth. Okay, so it gets a little confusing here, so just bear with me. Bit depth is the data that describes the color. In SDR 8-bit, there is a total value of 256 for each red, green, and blue color channel, hence RGB. 256 is 2 to the power of 8, which is exactly why we call it an 8-bit. So an example of this would be a 255, 255, 255 would be a white versus a 000, which would be a black. Now with HDR, there's a jump to 10 bits of data for each color channel, meaning you get 1,024 total values. So you're getting right around four times the amount of data than before. What that means for you is improved gradients, reduced banding, as well as improved highlights. So yes, there's more data, but how does this affect HDR? Well, Basically, if you imagine a 000 being a complete black, it uses this data stream to interpret the brightness of that color channel. How this works is every bit, or every exponential value of 2, is double the brightness of its previous bit. So we have 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128, which comes to a total of 254, with just a little bit of room for data to pass through. With the darkest being the lower end of the spectrum, you have half of that representing a white and a really white white. This is great, but unfortunately that's not how we view things with our own eyes. Our eyes notice more distinctive changes in the darker end of the spectrum. On the lighter end of the spectrum, after a certain point, we really can't tell the difference between one white to another. What HDR has done is doubled the amount of data being pushed so that it helps with the perception of the dark spectrum. By having 1,023 bits of data for the same spectrum, using 519 bits for the entire 255 bits of SDR, it leaves more room for the darker end of the spectrum to be accentuated and give it a little more detail. This will help smooth out gradients, have more vibrant and clearer pictures as well. HDR is also set at a cap about 10,000 nits, whereas SDR would be right around 100 nits. So when we put it like that, it's quite a difference. It's important to note that there's another key factor when it comes to the actual brightness, and that's the gamma curve. 
This gamma curve is actually used to improve the shadows and really accentuate that darker end of the spectrum. They do this by shifting some of the data from the bright end of the spectrum to the other side to adapt for our visual perception. With HDR, or at least HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision, they use what's called a PQ, or a perceptual quantizer. Big word, simple task. The perceptual quantizer is like this gamma curve, but it's based on the perceived contrast level at certain levels of brightnesses. So, which in turn makes it closer to how our eyes actually work. It's not perfect, but it's the best we have right now. HLG, on the other hand, doesn't use a PQ, but it has another cool strategy. HLG stands for Hybrid Log Gamma, and this HDR format was incorporated so that HDR content could be sent through broadcast. HLG basically takes the standard gamma curve and applies a logarithmic curve to the brighter end of the spectrum, which helps to compress the highlights, improving the dynamic range. So you get more details in the brightest parts of the image. It's not the perfect HDR format, but this simple logarithmic curve change allows for easier transitions into HDR content for broadcasters. With that, this sums up the details of HDR. Now we have the actual formats to talk about. First, you have HDR10, which is the most commonly and widely available of all the other formats. Now, this isn't because it's the best format or whatever, it's HDR10 is actually just an open source format, meaning it's free for use. It means manufacturers can incorporate this format without having to pay out of their pocket. HDR10 works with static metadata, meaning it can interpret the brightest scene and the darkest scene in a movie so that it sets one optimized contrast and brightness level for that entire movie or whatever it is that you're watching. So if you're looking at a TV and it supports HDR, you will at least be getting HDR10 support. HDR10 supports for 10-bit video, Rec 2020 color gamut, and 1000 nits peak brightness. On the other hand, you have Dolby Vision. Unlike HDR10, this format is an open source, meaning that manufacturers have to pay for this format. With that being said, you're now seeing a big change from HDR10. Dolby Vision comes with active metadata. So unlike HDR10, Dolby Vision actually has the capability to set the contrast and brightness for each scene, and in some cases, even frame by frame. Now, in reality, most TVs can't yet support 12-bit or even come close to hitting 4,000 nits. So Dolby works with the manufacturers to implement technology and algorithms to assist in the data interpretation and manipulation. That means when all the information is interpreted, you're getting the best representation of how it was intended to be seen. The other thing to notice is that with the higher brightness, Dolby Vision has the potential to be a little brighter when compared to HDR10. Enter HDR10+. Just like HDR10, this format is still open source and has become very popular. But this time with HDR10+, you get the dynamic metadata that Dolby Vision has incorporated with the same support structure as HDR10. And lastly, HLG is going to support the 10-bit video, the same Rec 2020 color gamut, and obviously the logarithmic gamma curve. In terms of the actual content out there, it depends on the streaming service. With Prime Video and Netflix supporting a good range of either HDR10 and HDR10 Plus content, as well as Dolby Vision, you won't be running out of things to watch, along with Blu-ray supporting all HDR formats in most cases, which is all great news for you because if you've got a smart TV, which are now more common than ever, you'll be able to set it up and get streaming right away. Unless you're planning on watching the content through actual media sources, which will require the proper HDMI cables to provide you with all that high resolution, high dynamic range, surround sound, Dolby Atmos, and all the amazing features. Now, if you learned something new, like this video, remember to subscribe and hit the bell to stay up to date with all of our great content. And until next time, guys, take it easy. He looks good on camera. He would be good, I think. For I would be great. I would just be like, hey guys.